have to manually start the recording here now. The recording has started.
diving deep into the source, bringing love that we can leave that we no longer need. Aloha. Good evening. This is Andrew Aloha live out of Flagstaff, Arizona, the Spiritual Image Productions on, um, on free conference call and also YouTube, establishing and maintaining right relationships with the human body. Oops, and I forgot. Uh, uh, I forgot. I'm also, oh, oh no. Well, here. Let's see if we can get back on here again. But, um,. I'm also on, on uh, Instagram, for those of you guys that are interested, you can check it out. Um, not sure. It says, okay, it says we're live now. Now, if, if for those of you that are, um, that are, in, are interested and in, are listening to us on Instagram, you can, if you want to ask questions for tonight's show, you can uh, go to 712-451-0948, 712-451-0948. Four five one zero nine four eight, and uh, and um, um, and and put in the access code nine three six six seven six pound nine three six six seven six pound, and you can ask your questions live and in person um, if you want. And then um, if you want to ask questions otherwise prior to tonight's show, then you can always go to spiritualimageproductions.com, spiritualimageproductions.com. And um, and get a hold a hold of me there. There's all my contact info is there. You can text me, email me, write me, uh, Facebook me or whatever, and you can uh, you can ask uh, questions in advance if you want. Tonight we're doing the intimacy tantra and relationship cyclically fulfilled. Um, tonight's co-host um, Maha Dikini Loray, she's out playing on a cruise ship right now. What the heck's wrong with her? How rude! That's what I say. But anyhow, uh, that's okay because we have Shakina Ray and also Annette. Uh, Annette. And now, Annette, I apologize. You're, you're going you're gonna to have to tell me your last, say your last name for me because I really am having a hard time with that one. How do you say your last name? Uh, say that again loud. Star and Yucta. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Well, thank, thank you for both. Both, both being here, uh, Shakina Ray and, and Annette Starnyukta. Um, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about use your masculine and feminine energies to balance your relationship and connect on all levels. Again, that's a long title. Use your masculine and feminine energies to balance your relationship and connect on all levels. And just to let you guys know, um, after moving to London, Shakina Ray became a certified tantric massage practitioner and successfully completed her tantric teacher's training course on uh, at tantric journey school of healing and awakening uh, she enjoys encouraging people to find ways to express themselves and teaches a variety of classes that assist people in discovering their passions loving and accepting themselves building their self-esteem and helping them to be comfortable and confident about their body and sexuality for more on Shakina Ray you can go to www.mytantraguide.com my tantra or uh, mytantraguide.com and then um, love coach Annette Starnjukta uh, is an uh, alchemist whose mission is to guide women to activate their own feminine superpower the ultimate goal is that women and men will live in, in love and peace with each other uh, for more on Annette you can go to www.magnetize MrWright.com, magnetize MrWright.com, and we are. We're going to come back and talk to uh, both of them here now, and uh, learn more about the the masculine and feminine energies, and uh, and about Shakina and Annette, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. In the meantime, I do I do want to give a big aloha to all of our underwriters that help make this show happen from week to week, month to month, year to year, beginning with nine, the 90 Day Ascension Journey at www90, and that's number 90, uh, dayascensionjourney.com. When you sign up for the 90-day ascension journey, you will be facilitated with defining and redefining your soul through life purpose. You will be assisted with finding out what ascension means to you. Oh, oh, before 
and I, I'm still getting the hang of it because because uh, this is a whole new format to me. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, put on our underwriters uh, pictures or gifts or logos on our on our screen so you can check it out. But yeah, you know, when you sign up for the 90 day ascension journey, you will be facilitated with defining and redefining your soul through life purpose. You will be assisted with finding out what ascension means to you on this journey. You will be provided with tools, techniques, and assistance to empower you to connect and reconnect with yourself, your emotions, and feelings in your mind, body, and spirit. Through a universal soul centered process, you will be going through a lifelong transformation that will allow you to move forward with your endeavors and never look back if you care. And then we have a novitae, um, and that's A N O V I T E, uh, which is a French word. Um, at, at www.spiritualimageproductions.anovate.com with uh, over 25,000 scientific papers published on colostrum, a 90-day guarantee and winner of the Healthy Living People's Choice Award twice over, Anovate focuses on helping people with weight loss, anti-aging, heart disease, diabetes, depression, high blood pressure, asthma, allergies, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammation, gout, lupus, fibromyalgia, Crohn's disease, cancer, ulcers, the polio virus, chronic infections, digestive orders, uh, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune disease, uh, thymus gland, mental clarity, maintenance and protection of the immune system, and uh, synthesis of and repair of RNA and DNA and more. Uh, again, it, 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 it's the colostrum, which is probably the truest colostrum you'll, you'll ever come across, is produced within six hours of the uh, of the cow given given its, its uh, colostrum to its calf, and so it, it's probably um, a very healing for a lot of people if they want to check it out. And, you know, we also have Maha Dikini Lore at www.mahadikini.com. Maha Dikini Lore's life has been a personal journey exploring sexuality and spirituality for over 20 years. She's a certified tantric counselor and tantric healer and a certified mind sound teacher. Maha Dikini Lore is also a graduate of Margot Nunn's year-long sky dancing tantra facilitating program, as well as a current member of the American Association of Sex Educators, Counselors, and Therapists Club, and a charter member of the Association of Sexual Energy Professionals. She regularly attends trainings and conferences to keep current with the latest research and information on sexual education. And then again, we have um, Annette and Shakina. Now, where are you guys located at now? I know you guys, you guys were going to do a, a, a workshop last week. And are you still back in California, or are you, are you back in Virginia now? Yeah, we're in San Clemente right now. Oh, San Clemente. Yeah. Okay, and that's in California. Now, is that a, that is that that's not along the coast, is it? Yeah, it is. It is. Oh, I, I, I can see the balcony window. Oh, <laughs> nice. Hey, see, send some of those pictures over here right now. Hurry up. Yeah, uh, yeah. You yeah, you probably have a nice nice sun sun uh, sunset right now, huh? Well, we just had a beautiful sunset. We took pictures. We'll send you pictures. Oh, nice, nice. So anyhow, um, you guys did a workshop. Um, now, um, they're in California. And, uh, Shakina, you're visiting from England, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then, uh, Annette, are you visiting too from, uh, from overseas or are you, do you actually live here in the United States? I live in Virginia, Redford, United States. Okay. And so, um, she, well, let's, let's go like this. Shakina, if you get, can just kind of give us a bio, an overview of who Shakina is, where you grew up at, and how you got to, to practicing Tantra. So let's start with that, and then we'll go to Annette next. Okay? Are you, are you okay with that? Sure, sure. Um, I was actually born in Hungary, and I moved to America, and I lived in America for 25 years. And then I moved to London three years ago. And while I was living in America, I spent about 15 years studying different energy healing modalities, like Reiki, Matrix, Energetic, Reconnected healing, and then when I moved to London three years ago, it's when I took my practice training. So that was just adding another level to my knowledge of energy healing modality. So it's just a great and exciting and fascinating journey. 
Nice, nice. So now you uh, you you grew up uh, you grew up in in Hungary and 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 uh, you 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 were when, at which point did you you get involved with tantra? Not until you went to England or or before that. Yes, I it's been just when I got to England two years ago. Got, oh, really? So, so you you didn't practice it. You, you you knew about tantra, but you didn't practice or do anything with it until you went to England. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I studied a lot of other different energy modalities, but not tantra. So it's just basically taking energy healing to a different level. Then I I talk about different energy healing modalities and different flavors of ice cream. Some people prefer tea, some people prefer tantra, like some people prefer chocolate, or some people prefer strawberry ice cream. So it's just like different people prefer different types of energy. So, so we just um, choose yeah. and fix to see what we like. And, and even in my tantra healing practice, it doesn't matter what people come in. I mix mix of different modalities together based on what people need. Got it, got it. It doesn't matter much what they come in for once we talk, then we decide what would be the best healing modality to help that person and maybe second session we go into that Interesting, interesting. So um um and so when you were in here in, in the States, um you mo most of you made a living as a nurse, as a massage therapist, or how, how did you survive when you were here? Well, when I was in America, I had about five different businesses, and I'm not going to go into that, but it was anything between having a computer business to having a craft store to different things, and alongside, I was building up my healing Practice also, so mostly energy healing, like I said, they see access consciousness, person active healing, matrix energy. Nice, so nice. And, and so when, when you went to uh, England, um, and when you went to England, you did you, uh, you were you studied the you went through the Tantra program there, and that was a two year program, or how long was that program? No, that program was just a uh, couple of months, and and the total was really only uh, ten days class time. But uh, like I said, I already learned a lot of healing modalities, so it was just adding another another extra level to it. Oh, interesting, interesting. And so now, um, now you you. you um your family doesn't practice any of this. Does your family are are they involved in any of this, or you you're the only one that does this type of practice? I really hope my family never finds out what I do. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, um, I hear you. Yeah, and they don't know what I do. I hear you. They don't know what I do. I hear you. They don't know what I do. I hear you. They don't know what I do. I hear you. They don't know what I do. I hear you. They don't know what I do. I hear you. And my dad, my mom died three years ago, but my dad lives still. Oh, he's still he's still around, kicking around. So you you got brothers and sisters? No, I don't. Oh yeah, so you're oh also you must be spoiled spoiled rotten. You're 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 the only kid, huh? Yeah, I'm a princess. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! So um. Annette, uh, what, what about you? Where did you grow up at, and how how was it growing up for you? And then how did you get involved into into all this? Yeah, I uh, was born in uh, Sweden, Stockholm. So I'm Swedish, and I studied at the Royal Institute of Technology and uh, took a master in science in chemistry. And then I worked in the paper industry, which is a very conservative industry with only men at the time, 1980, when I started it. I was the only female engineer. So I was exploring everything about the masculine energy, uh, using my masculine energy and learning about communication, mainly with men. So it's interesting. Uh, interesting in my body, socially, 
was, uh, I was exhausted and hit the brick wall because I was not in my masculine energy. So then, <laughs> and you, and you, you are exhausted. I actually traveled to Hawaii with a friend who uh, ran to the house and we were 15 people and uh, having kayaks on Hawaii, swimming with the dolphin, and I had a total awakening with the meeting with the dolphin, the dolphin mommy, mommy and baby dolphin, and how she showed me her baby, and my heart totally opened, and I knew I could not go back to the fact that it was a male and be there anymore. I decided to quit my work because I was like, whoa, uh, it's this life. I saw the beauty, uh, connecting with people, with nature. And interestingly, just before I went to Hawaii, I had got a shamanic training. So my teacher was trained by a Native American Indian uh, in uh, the United States. So I did a seven year long program and spent, spent like five weeks a year for seven years doing all this uh, uh, ceremonies and healing, arts and crystal healing and, and drum, uh, drum journeys, uh, healing circles and so I already had done that, thought of that before I did my trip and met with the dolphins. So that actually changed my course. So I decided I went home. And I had a dream that if I would enter the paper mill again, my EKG, my heart, would just, there was like a, a monitor showing my heart. Uh, like flat, and <coughs> so I decided to, to follow my heart, whatever that meant. And uh, so I quit my job, very well paying job, and I sold my house. I had divorced one year earlier, and my kids moved out of the house, one was in college. And then moved to New Zealand, and then I started with an hurry healer, as I was a center one and a half year, and got bitten by a spider, a deadly spider, and that was my initiation to be, to go out with my healing powers, go out in the world and actually do the healing work. Got it, got it. Um, so now, so okay. then you can and that, and that, let me ask you this. Now, where, where were you living at? I, I, don't, I don't know if I got that or not. When, when you sold your house, where were you living at? Where were you practicing at? Or where, I moved to New, I moved to New Zealand. And your, your, your job that you were doing was in New Zealand, is that correct? No, I quit my job uh, in Sweden. Oh, and Sweden. I yeah. I okay. was living in Sweden. I moved to New Zealand. Oh God! And and that and and so your dream was signifying that if you went back to Sweden and continued there, you probably would have had a heart attack and passed away. Is that is that correct? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So my my journey from Hawaii told me that I'm meeting with the dolphin. I went back and quit my job, and then I went to New Zealand, and then I had this. Initiation of the spider, deadly spider bite, and went to an intense healing journey where I met the shaman in the shaman woman healer who taught me uh, to read energy and x ray bodies and do healing work. Got it, got it. Now, how long were you in Hawaii for? And Hawaii was only three weeks. Oh, three weeks. And then you went to New Zealand, and New Zealand was where you did your shamanism uh, practice or training at. Is that correct? I had already discussed that in Sweden with a, uh, with a shaman healer. And then 
I had a dog by going to New Zealand uh, with the Mari healer. Got it, got it. And and that is and now is that when you started practicing and doing the tantra or was it in Sweden that you started doing that? Uh, I I don't uh, practice tantra. For me, it's energy work and exploring the, for the masculine and the feminine energies and how to integrate those energies. So I do energy work, integrating the masculine and feminine energies in uh, your aura, in your physical body. So, and also teaching, having workshops and teaching what masculine and feminine energies are and how you can integrate it by uh, by using music, dancing, painting, drawing, uh, using all the senses. And also, it's important to balance the, your both in the body, your in your mind, your emotion, and spirit and sexuality. So that's why Tequina and I, our uh, energy work, and uh, uh, we complement each other. Yeah, because you both did energy work, um, and you've done a number of practices or trainings that, that have to do with doing energy work. I hear exactly what you're saying. Yeah. So, uh, it's, 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 it's Really interesting working them for 19, 19 years along with the energy healing. And now, since a year back, it's a year we have that now explored and are working together doing workshops. We started in Sweden having workshops and then we had workshops in Virginia and now in California. Nice. And we are going to go uh, booking for next year in Europe. So we, we, it's so much more, it feels so much more fun, much more powerful, and we can serve in a greater way. Now, how, how, so you guys met in, in Sweden, is that correct? Correct. And how did you meet there? How did you come, come about to start doing these workshops together? Well, there was a friend, a mutual friend, who introduced us to each other, and she's psychic too, so she just had the feeling that we would get along really well, and she also had been very interested in helping orphans and opening schools and orphanages and different places around the world. So that's how she connected us, and then I finally came to visit the head in Sweden, and then we we just realized how well we get along and how well we can teach together. So we decided to put on some workshops in Sweden and they went really well. So so now we're just continuing on that path. Got it, got it. So now uh let me ask you this, Shakina. Um what was it like to go through that, that three week uh, tantra training program? What what was that like? What what kind of things did you learn? That would were used that are useful for you now and and especially for your workshop. Well, mostly what we were learning is yoni and lingam massage, which is the yoni is the vagina and lingam is the penis and prostate massage. So that was the main area of our learning. But we also learned how to connect with another person and also with ourselves on every level. So we were going to all the chakras from top to bottom, and then we were learning how to make connections with another person to each chakra and how to play our own energy and our own chakra. Got it, got it. Yeah. And, and a lot of it has to also with clearing out old Emotional wounds, all emotional trauma, and also physical trauma sometimes. So I work with women. What I do with them is to help them to release sexual trauma, 
some of them childbirth, some of them surgery. Men, I, I work a lot with men with cancer, decoration, and erectile dysfunction, things like that. Got it, got it. So um, I tell you what, I I want to I want to take a little breather. I want to play some music. Um, uh, I want to play some music again by by uh, the 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 introduction song that we 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 uh, played was by uh, Serena uh, Gabriel out of Tucson from her album Diving Deep. And the uh, the name of the song was called Diving Deep. Uh, I want to play a song called Morning Light. Um, and, and I'm going to send out love, blessings, healings, angels of light and love to, to of course, you, Annette, and um, Shakina, and all your family and friends, and, of course, to myself and all my family and friends, to all our vehicles and places of residence that help take care of us, to, um, to the President of the United States. Man, <laughs> that guy really needs some help. And then all his entourage, um, to all the people that are still going through uh, a, lot, a lot of, uh, uh, drama, or actually, I should say, chaos uh, that that are, that are going through, uh, that um, just went through the hurricanes and the fires and the earthquakes and all that. Uh, to all those people and all their family and friends that are uh, concerned about them. To all the kids and the animals and the plants on the planet, especially the ones in need concern. Anybody you guys want to add to that at all? You want to send love and light to right now as well. Love and blessing. What's that? Yes, she said love and blessing, and yes, we're, we're sending beautiful, unconditional love to anybody who is willing to receive it. Okay, good. To everybody listening to this, uh, to this, um, to this interview, and then uh, to everyone else in the need, need and concern, we will be back. Morning Light by Sabrina Gabriel from her album Diving Deep. Thank you. 
And we're back. This is Andrew Loha live out of Flagstaff, Arizona, the Spiritual Women's Productions on Free Conference Call and YouTube, establishing and maintaining right relationships through human, human, human value. Tonight we're talking to uh, Shakina and Annette on um, using your masculine and feminine energies to balance your relationship and connect on all levels. Uh, and, uh, Shakina uh, is a Hungarian. Growing up in the United States, uh, or spending a lot, of, a lot of time in the United States, and, and uh, learning energy work, and then moving eventually to back to England, where she was uh, certified as, as as a tantric practitioner, and then Annette, uh, growing up in Sweden, um, and and um, giving up the corporate world so she can do learn and work with shamanism and energy and and so forth. So. Um, they're now in, in, in California. They've, um, they've just finished a workshop and they, 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 they met with each other in Sweden, uh, and, and learned that they were, they could work together and it, it was easier, uh, for them to work together and go from there. So, so when you first met, um, Annette and, and Shakina, did you guys start doing conferences, workshops then or what? What, uh, and and have, has it evolved as, as gradually as as the time time went on? I mean, we're talking about 19 years ago. You guys met, is that correct? No, we met. We uh, we connected uh, five years ago. Oh, oh, five years ago. Okay, go ahead. Um, it was through a school project, an orphanage in Bali. So uh, we have been working on starting an alternative school where the children direct their own learning and it's a dem democratic school. And through that work we found out that uh, uh, when we met in Sweden and actually did workshops together is that it was so much fun and we had <coughs> so much to contribute and, and put it together, we complement each other. Got it, got it. And so you guys, you guys started working with, uh, um, you, you were working on a project for orphanages. Is that, is that what I hear you saying? Uh, a school project, to start a school. Got it, got it. And so um, at that, go ahead. Yeah. In the north, then. Got it, got it. And so, uh, at, at that point, is that when you decided to go ahead and start doing workshops together, or how, how did that all transpire? Yeah, that's how, because we met through the school project, and when we met in Sweden, we decided we may as well take the opportunity to, to do a workshop together. And through that experience, we found it so much fun and rewarding. So then we continued our journey putting workshops together. Got it, got it. And so what, 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 what was the first workshop that you guys did together? What was that about? Mm, about play, play. Okay. To teach adults how to play. <laughs> right. So, uh, so some people they they didn't they didn't get to live out their childhood lives, so they they had to learn how to play again. Yeah. What well, what we teach people is to find out uh, what they're passionate in because some people don't even know what they want to do with their life. So we do something called the happiness test where you go and find, like you write down everything that makes you happy and then find out what makes you the happiest, the most happy. And then, then we, when they find out, then we teach them how to achieve what makes them the happiest in their life. So we help them with tools and different ideas and even partnerships to make you to show them how they can achieve whatever they want to do with their life, whatever makes them happy and whatever brings them joy. And we do that through play, but like an excess singing, dancing, painting, drawing, getting much in touch with their intuition. So get them to go into the creative process with their intuition and their life. 
That sounds like my creative imagination class from, from acting school. That's what that sounds like. But that's the other one. So, uh, and oh, how, that's, what's that? Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He did a, I, I, I did acting school, um, and, um, that, that's really similar to one, one of the, uh, at least one or two of the classes that I took on creative imagination. Um, so now let me, so how long did you guys do that for, for, for how long? <clears throat> So, uh, uh, was this the question, uh, you mean how long the workshop was? No. Did you do that, that workshop for a year or two or just once or how, 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 how long did, did that last for? The first time we did it was in Sweden in August last year. So that was the first time we did it. And oh, that was recent. That ever since then we have done this uh, in Virginia and now in California. Oh, so that that's so, the workshop. That's the workshop you did in California a few days ago. Is that is that correct? Correct. Got it. Yeah. It, it's part of it. It's part, it's part of it because the workshop is about, it's about relationships. So it's about how to attract love and abundance through pleasure and play. So, uh, and that's where we teach the core uh, creation process using the masculine and feminine energies. And we do role, role playing, so uh, <coughs> they get to taste uh, how it is. We only use your masculine energy in a situation when you have like a work situation or like you have a situation with your child and you can't get the child to uh, make the, your homework or whatever it is. And then they play with using the masculine energy or the feminine energy. But in this particular workshop, because it was about relationship, it's both for couples or for singles too, because it's a very important skill to be able to use <coughs> both your masculine and feminine energy and, and integrate it in yourself. Because when you do that, you can then play with the energies with your partner. So uh, it's, a, it's like dancing, like ballroom dancing, leading, you lead or you follow, and, and then you change. We also have the dancing exercises, to lead and following, and then this switch. So you get to experience how it is to follow and lead the different energies in that. So we play with energies between uh, your partner, if you come with your partner, you do it with your partner, and if you're single, you will do that with other singles, and it's a very, very important skill. So now, are, are, that, that's another question. Um, are all the people that are doing your workshop, are, are they all single, or do you have couples um, joining you as well? It's both couples and singles. Got it, got it. And when, what, what kind of result, what, what do you, what do you think that the, that you, these, these people will get out of your, uh, workshop? What, what will they accomplish? What will they learn? What will, what kind of results will they get from, from this workshop? So, the feedback we always get from our workshop that people get in touch with themselves, they learn a lot about themselves and how they behave and how they move energy and how they interact with other people. And then at the end of the workshop, everybody feels like they're more of their themselves and they, they know more about how to navigate the world with their energy, with their interaction, with, with their connection with other people. So, that makes sense. Got it, got it. Uh, and so, um, 
I, I guess what, what, what kind of success, I mean, have you, have you had, I don't, I don't know how many of these workshops you've done. Well, how many of these workshops have you done so far? So I've been teaching my own workshops all over Europe now. So I would say I've done about six or seven of them. It's what's called energetic bliss mastery. And the energetic bliss mastery is what we're doing with the next one day of our combined workshop, which is finding your own energy, feeling your own energy, feeling other people's energy, clearing your chakras, clearing other people's chakras, connecting to all your chakras. And then I also teach people basic massage skills to also to help people connect to each other. Got it, so got I'm it. Oh, so now, now, what is your workshop, um, uh, Annette? Um, what's that all about? So my my workshop is uh, for single women to uh, to integrate uh, uh, the masculine and feminine energies in, within themselves. And also to activate their femme superpower, power to be able to magnetize Mr. Right. Got it. Uh, and, and now I, so many have asked me to also see, to, to do less and be more. So they need this, this energy and using the masculine and feminine energy in work related situations. So they 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 minimize the stress in their life. So oh I I I don't know how many workshops I've been doing workshops for fifteen years, so I I done many workshops. Got it, got it. And mo mostly this one that you're talking about or others of uh, different types? Uh uh, it, it has been different types. It has about the lead, leadership training, inner leadership, and uh, the masculine and feminine energy and the magnetized Mr. Right is probably, what is that, four, five, four, five, five years? Got it, got it. And so, um, uh, what kind of results have you accomplished or have, have you derived? from these workshops where women will come back up to you and they go, thank you very much, I, I found Mr. Wright. What kind of success have you had with that? Yeah, that, that's a very rewarding, rewarding answer. It, it, it's, um, they, first they say, that after finishing the course, they say, oh my goodness, everyone should know about this. This is crucial to be able to have a successful relationship and to choose the right kind of man and know if we are compatible or not. Without this tool, I see how I now have been struggling and not finding the right person for me, and now I know why. And interestingly, uh, it, I would say... Uh, like I have this online course, and the people who was on my online course two years ago, the first course I did, after three months after the course had finished, 50% of them had found the partner. Uh, but I would say uh, people that continue on the one-on-one on one coaching, so... If the women are committed, as well, uh, he finds he finds her, Mr. Right. Uh, if the person is not committed, then don't want to do the work, uh, and just then they won't find anyone. So, <laughs> right. now I'm, so now when I take on one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Uh, the first person I ask is like from a scale one to ten, uh, 
all committed, are you? Because if you're not committed to do whatever it takes to to do the work with yourself, uh, then you're you're likely to do the same mistake again and again and again, and that won't right. do you any good if you take a course and 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 then say, oh well, and don't do the work. So the the people who really are committed and uh, whatever they did uh, uh, a six week course and were committed to do the work, they find find them the right. Or I did one on one coaching, or I did workshops like last summer. Uh, it's interesting to see that yeah, uh, not hundred percent of them uh, have found what. The farm one, but I see it related to again. Got it. I would say that seventy percent is get a gap. It's the seventy percent of my clients have found this right. Oh, that's good. That's good. And so, yeah, you're saying that that you, uh, on top of the workshops, you offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, and and so do you, Shakina. Is that correct? Yeah, I actually have uh, personal sessions with people. Um, very rarely I do online one too, but I can also do online one. Most of my work is hands on. Got it, got it. And so now, uh, so you're saying also that you've only done about two or three of these workshops together so far in the last few years. Is that correct? Last couple of years? Yes. So this is, this is new territory for you. And, and, something that you've recently embarked upon and uh, you're still exploring, you're still uh, working working out some of the wrinkles from, from the workshop. So, um, I'm assuming. So, um, go ahead. We are, and we are planning, we are already started to plan our workshop together for next year. So we are going to continue <coughs> doing our, our Separate work, and then we are going to do together. So Got it. we are continuing. So, so it's not adding on to our menu of what we can offer. Got it. And so, where, where of uh, when and where are your next workshops? We don't know yet. It it seems like we will be going to do one in Belgium early spring. That's where we got invited and also to Sweden. So, but there's no definite plans yet. But those, those are the places where we got invited to come and do these workshops together. Got it. Got it. And what what else uh, what else that um, that we haven't talked about that you want to put out there that that you want to say to us? Well, the part one part is. We were going to talk about is how to connect on all levels with somebody. Um, so we can talk about that. Okay. So, so are you and I am assuming a lot of our listeners are familiar with the different chakras, with the seven chakra system? Okay. So, so what I learned is, is Connect with the chakras. So, for those of you who don't know, the chakras are spinning energy wheels in the body. And so, we connect with the energy of our chakras to people. So, for instance, when you first meet somebody, you just have this intuition that this person might be, might be the right person for you and might be interesting to you. And then you start talking to them first to get to know them better. And then as you talk to them, if your intuition was right, then you start making a connection to your heart. So you, you fall in love, basically, or you start to really like this person. And then, and then as the time goes on, then, then you're connecting to your solar plexus chakra, to to kissing, touching, getting to know each other more at the physical level, and then and then you then you get to have sex eventually with this person, 
and that lot of people a lot of time in the Western countries that people will have sex even before they get married or before they move in together, but it could be in a different order. And then if everything is working with this person, then the then they move themselves home base together, get a house together, home and get an apartment together, and start living together. This would be their first step or their first step. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but the two people have to go through all these steps and have to know if this person is compatible with you or not. So what I hear you saying is that when people start to get to know each other, there's a, there's a um, a certain level of of development of connection that happens in in a certain way, um, and as as the the connection gets uh, deeper and more advanced and 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 um, more in order, then 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 uh, that that um, is in relation to whatever chakra they're connecting with. So uh, they start connecting at the, the crown chakra or third eye chakra, and then down, then they start uh, connecting at the throat chakra, and then the heart chakra, and then the solar plex chakra, and then the sacral chakra, and then the, the base root chakra. Eventually, which is which is when they actually move in with each other and live with each other. Is yeah. that is that what I hear you saying? Yeah, and then according to our theory, that's the correct way. Like, for instance, a lot of men, especially women, who just, just meet somebody and want to have sex right away. And for men, that's easy to do because men operate from their second chakra, which is just one away from the first chakra. So as long as they can trust this woman, that they're not going to hurt them, then they can have sex with them, right? Got but it. women connect to the heart chakra, so for a man to be able to win a woman to like to have a really good relationship and sex with them, they have to actually connect with their heart. And so if the woman actually has to fall in love and be able to have good sex with somebody. They can have some sex with anybody, but to really truly connect, the man has to be able to connect to the woman's heart, so they have to start at the top and move down until they can finally have sex with them. Does that make sense? Right, I hear you. So now let me ask you this. What does falling in love mean to you? What, how do you define falling in love, what, uh, being in love? What, is that, what does that mean to you? For for a lot of people, falling in love is is actually attachment. Um, when when we talk about tantra, falling in love just means that you're making a connection with this person, and that falling in love could last one minute, three minutes, three hours, or it could last a lifetime. But like in tantra, we learn to <coughs> Be able to attach and also detach. So it's, it's a conscious choice that we're making if we want to stay with this partner. Where a lot of times in so-called normal life, falling in love that that just means that you're getting attached with somebody for out of out of a different kind of intention. And a lot of times there is fear behind it, like fear of loss or or uh, fear of being lonely, so on and so forth, and then then you're projecting into this person your image and hoping that they fit that image that you're projecting onto them. So a lot of times falling in love is just infatuation until you find out that this person doesn't fit at all the image that you're projecting onto them. Um, but in my, my definition, falling in love is, is seeing this person through all your senses, to your to your intuition, <coughs> to your heart, to your to your energy field, to your body, so making a complete connection. Does that make sense? I hear you. And so, does falling in love entail or mean making a heart to heart connection as well, or or or, or does it? Yes. Well, to me, falling in love means that you're making a connection on every single level that I was just telling you about. Um, so on every level being all the chakras, 
or all the all the levels yeah. like of bo mind, body, and soul, and emotions and things, or or all the above. Exactly. Yeah, it could mean either or, and and it doesn't mean that like I'm having sex with this person, but I'm <coughs> connecting with them on an energetic level. Got it. Got it. Uh, do you do you concur with that, uh, Annette? Do you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, yes, I agree. I agree with that. And I like to add one thing also that I personally uh, take on um, is if uh, we don't fall in love with the other person, we we share the experience of being love. Got it. Got it. And I I agree with you one hundred percent with that. Um, when I when I, I teach because I do a mentoring program uh, called the 90 day ascension journey and and when I we, when I do the tantra version of that uh, that's exactly what I told the 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 students is that that being in love uh, is is sharing sharing uh, sharing um, um, whatever's going on and sharing like like you said the experience of what's going on and not imposing upon those those experiences upon somebody else. Or, or demanding that they share their experience or whatever, but everything is mutual and and um, and um, compatible. So, so it's like that. I hear exactly what you're saying. So, um, yeah, and because we are love, and because then I recognize the love in you, and the love in my partner, or the love in the child, the love in the tree, the love for the bird as a this is the energy we connect, and this is the vibration that uh, experience that we share together when we say, "I love you, I love you." And yeah. All right. We we, have, we feel this vibration going on between us. <coughs> it's love in that in our heart. So yeah. And and not not to be confused with with lust or with some kind of manipulation where where your intention is to. To uh, to get something out of somebody for for whatever reason or whatever. So, uh, but an unconditional uh, regard for somebody uh, uh, for their well-being and in support of their well-being. I hear you. So true. So um and and so when when you're doing your workshop, I, I you want to give us like an overview of, of like a like an outline in terms of how how you do your workshop or whatever? Yeah. So uh, uh, first we work with to connect and with the energy exercises to connect with each other in the group. That is really important because if you connect from the mind and the mind chapter. We are not likely to go deep and, and let us receive the understanding, the knowledge, the new tools, the energy. So that, that is what we always start with. And then we now have been doing together that I will see the core creation process and how the, uh, the feminine way to look at it is a Circle and how, when it's integrated, you have you have universe, uh, the source, and then you have the feminine energy, the spark, the intuition, and then the masculine, and they have a physical manifestation, and it goes around in a circle. And because our society does not value the feminine energy. Uh, so if you imagine, it takes out that uh, quarter of the circle, the energy can't flow because it's unbalanced. Got it, got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, and then we also then we put on music and before going into detail what the masculine and feminine characters are, we want our uh, participants um, to 
theory on how this, how the energy feels in the body, so by dancing, dancing the feminine energy and the masculine energy, and they, they are, so the music is chosen very intentionally, so uh, uh, it's more fluid, it's just more fluid than it could be a smooth if um, higher pitch is the feminine and then you would have like drums or uh, a bass singing or it's more like and then it's more also like robotic, it's more <coughs> so you can see the flow of energy in the bodies when you look at people dancing the music. It's very interesting. So um, we use a lot of uh, experimental, as a, um, you know, we, we do exercises, I mean exercises. So we can get a sense of the energy in all ways possible. So we do painting, drawing, dancing, and then move energy. Um, as uh, Sakina said to you, uh, I, if, if anything you'd like to add, I think you no, we're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we will go back and forth. We take turns on uh, uh, energy exercises and how to feel energy, uh, connect, how to do the dancing, follow and leading. So, you get the ex experience of the energy as well as the teaching of the difference. Uh, in the masculine family, and then and how to collect, connect, and then the role playing. The role playing is how you integrate the masculine and feminine energy. How you can use it in your life. That is a very has been shown to be a very, very, very effective tool. <clears throat> so you you uh, for these workshops you. You dance and you show them, uh, uh, show them how to uh, role play. You you do uh, drawings. Do you um, do you talk to them about archetypes, the different archetypes of the masculine and the feminine, uh, or anything like that? Uh, the characteristics of the characteristics of the masculine and feminine energy. Got it. So that's that's the, yeah, so that would look like the polarity, for example, masculine is any energy active. And the polarity of that is the feminine in energy passive. Yeah. Uh, the masculine in it is, is the mind, you use the mind and the feminine emotion. Masculine is the visual, logic and analytical. <coughs> and the feminine uh, is the intuition. And then we, uh, we use, then we go into, for example, uh, in Christian, the really teach different way how do you, how can you get in touch with your intuition? In very so many ways, but you can, it just could be prevented. And so it's not only to say, uh, active, passive, mind, emotion, visual, intuition, it focuses or it use awareness, which is the feminine, it's to actually uh, uh, give examples of how it is character, how it uh, plays in your, in your life. That's that, that makes sense? Got it, got it. So, um, now do you also teach them how to, uh, how to do massage as well? In this course, we don't when we're together in my own classes about how all those class goes on with um massage during the class sessions. One is called the five element massage and the other one is what's commonly called the armoring, I just call it the intention so the body release and trauma all the time. Got it, got it. And um what else was I gonna ask? Um Oh no! Oh now is this everybody's clothed in, in, in these workshops? And you don't do this naked, right? Yes, in in our workshops together, everybody's clothed. 
Uh, and my module one is all closed on module two and module three could be either naked or a bathing suit. Oh, got it, got it. So, um, um, what else? Any anything else that you want to tell us about these workshops? We are having fun. Right. We do it in a safe, a safe way. So that is this is important. It, it, it could be so. It's like you do all this work and you get the insights and then you're laughing and crying or um and everything. We are all all the most of but. It, it's all like we have fun. So the old, the whole idea is, is to let your hair hang down and have fun, and just just hang out and just just be 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 uh, in with the flow. Yeah, I mean, people started calling my workshop play tough because they're having so much fun. So they started calling it play tough. Yeah. And I This is a two day workshop or how many days is this? Mine is two days, but we're doing it together it's three days. Oh it is three days. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um all right. So um it sounds like a lot of fun and it sounds like and and I don't know how how many how many people are actually in these workshops? Twenty, fifteen, twenty, ten people or so? Some are between eight and fifteen that's where I've been getting. Yeah. Got it. So there's, it's not too big so that, that you get lost in it, but it, it, it's enough people that you can have fun and, and just uh, have a, a good yeah. time. Yeah, people can have their own individual experience. Yeah. Got it, got it. So I want to thank you, uh, both of you, for sharing your, your expertise and your knowledge and your fun. Um, anything else that we haven't talked about that you want to put out there? No. We are happy that we could be on your show, radio show. So thank you. Thank Thanks for inviting us. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, now, are, are, are you guys um, doing any, any private uh, workshops or you know, individual workshops as well anytime soon? Or you already told us about all those? Um, I'm doing module two in Belgium in a couple of weeks. And then... First of December, first weekend of December, I'll be doing Switzerland, module one in Switzerland. Got it. Um, we'll be doing in Virginia, fourth of fifth of November, and then I'm going to Sweden, um, doing one in the middle of December. Got it. Got it. So you guys are keeping busy, and if they want to, uh, again, if if they want to find your information about these workshops and about you, where is the best place for them to go to for that? Mine is mystandroguide.com and then just look for blue classes. Okay, and, and um, they... Magnetizemrrise.com and, and they can get a hold of you there if they want to connect with you there as well? Oh, awesome. Well, thank you very much. And, and, and you guys are still in, enjoying the beach over there in California. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, for two more days. <laughs> two more days, and then you go back to Virginia? Yeah, with my awesome piece. Got it, got it. So, anyhow, yeah, enjoy the rest of your stay in California. And I want to thank all of you for stopping by. Have a God Goddess week. Be the love that you are, always have been, and always will be. I love Thank you. Thank you to meet the person next time. Yeah, yeah. no kidding, right? Thank you, Andrew. Aloha. 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 This session is no longer being recorded.